Welcome to another video interview. Today I've got John Kohler. John, some of you may know because he runs the Grow Your Greens channel on YouTube and he, uh, he's been doing this a long time, longer than me, I think. I started on YouTube in 2010 and uh, he may have been started before me and I know he certainly made a lot more videos than me in the thousands, I, I bet. So John, good to see you, man. Yeah, glad to be here, Chris. And John uh, is an expert on growing food, growing vegetables, has tons of videos on how to do that. And also a lot of videos on juicers and juicer reviews. And he's got a uh, website called discountjuicers.com. So he, he is the go-to guy uh, for that kind of information. And so I think we'll have a fun conversation just chatting about all that kind of stuff. How did you get into this? Uh, kind of like you, Chris, you know, I almost died. <laughs> so, you know, luckily my experience happened a lot earlier than it did for you. Um, you know, I got started in, in the diet path in 1995. Um, prior to that, I was hospitalized for spinal meningitis. Uh, the doctor said I had, they had no cure for me. And that, um, you know, I could only say through higher power that I'm here today. And then at that point, when I got out of the hospital, I had to figure out why that happened in the first place. And basically, the doctor said they blamed it on my genes. And they said I have bad genes. And, you know, I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to believe what they're telling me. And that led me kind of like you to like, you know, number one, juicing. And then changing my diet into a plant-based fruit and vegetable dominated raw foods diet. Um, you know, to pack in those phytonutrients and the life force energy. And that led me on my career, what I do today. So that was really the instrument that got me into all this. And then I'm like, how can I improve every little component of my lifestyle? So for example, you know, I mean, I, I sell the best juicers, you know, to extract the most nutrition with the least amount of oxidative damage. I know you are helped by using the champion juicer. And I, when I, when I heard that, that you healed yourself with a champion juicer, I cringe because I know that, you know, that's not the best juicer out there. I mean, it, yes, it works. And yes, some juice is better than no juice, but there's so much better and more efficient juicing technology that you can give yourself more advantages by not oxidizing the juice as much, for example. So that's, so I've been specializing in, especially the equipment, because nobody really dives deep into the equipment that allows you to maximize the amounts of basically benefits from the plants we get. So that's like literally my life. I sell the equipment. I use the equipment in my daily life. In addition, I also had to like learn how to grow my own food because I learned that the food system, as much as I still buy plenty of organic foods primarily, the food system is not there to grow the highest quality food. Unfortunately, the food system is there for, for money, for profit, like most businesses in the, in the world are. And I'm like, you know what? To have the highest quality food, I got to learn how to do it myself. And that, that's what I do. So I do a lot of practices that some people may think strange or weird, including sometimes, you know, uh, getting my plants, my fertilizer from me when I have to <laughs> <laughs> relieve myself. Um, yeah. But well, what um, you just but, said, true about the food system, it's pretty important that for people to understand the food system, their goal is to grow the biggest, fastest food, right? And... Uh, sell you the best looking food, which is not necessarily the healthiest. And it reminds me of when I was in high school, when I was in high school, I had a very limited uh, understanding of the world, right? It's very myopic. And there was a girl who moved here from Argentina and she dated a friend of mine and she said, he relayed something to me that she had said to him, which I thought was so interesting at the time, which is she said, you know, all the fruits and vegetables here are so beautiful, but they don't taste good. <laughs> and I thought, wow, that's weird. What does she mean by that? You know, now I know, now I understand, right? But she was, she came from a country where produce was ugly, right? Like it just looks all funny and our produce looks beautiful, but it's like, it's lacking. I mean, it, it has enough nutrients to actually grow, of course but it is lacking uh, compared comparatively to organic, organically grown fruits and vegetables. There are definitely deficiencies in some phytonutrients, minerals and vitamins and things like that. Um, and that's what you're talking about, right? Absolutely, I'm talking about specifically the secondary plant metabolites, <laughs> which are phytonutrients, which are what the plant has to make to defend itself against stressors. And when the plants are literally being spoon fed, you know, 
uh, man-made fertilizers, they don't have to work as hard, <laughs> you know? So it's like the plants that people eat are literally, in my opinion, on junk food. Yeah, I what? really want to get into this. But before we do, I, how old were you when you had spinal meningitis? I was in my mid, early 20s. Mid, early 20s. And yeah. that was 95. So how old are you now? Yeah. Well, I don't disclose my age online, but you know, well, we'll have to, I think you can kind of do the math and kind of figure it out. Do the math. Well, you're older than me. Yes, absolutely. And, uh, and you look great. I mean, you look, your skin looks very youthful. Your face looks good. I mean, you know, this, this is, is my like, program that I'm living on, you know, I mean, it's, it's an anti-aging program at its finest. Plus I, you know, do a lot of other things to, you know, try to stay youthful and, yeah. uh, you know, have a nice, maybe more than just looking, because everybody's always involved with looks, and that's what people are seeing online right now if they're watching this, but, like, how I feel and my my energy levels and all those things, you know, I, I mean, I still want to have a family and have kids. So I need to find a the proper partner to do that with first, you know, and I want to be youthful and and, and raise my kids and, and all that stuff, too, still, you know, so got to yeah. keep myself in good shape. Vitality is pretty important. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can fake you can fake youthful looks with all kinds of procedures and uh, I've had lotions, none <laughs> lotions and potions and surgeries and whatever. But yeah, but uh, people ask me all the time. I'm I'm often this is not a brag. I'm just I, people are often surprised uh, at my age. I'm about to be 45 and they think I'm much younger. And I'm like, look, it's the fruits and vegetables. I'm just telling you, I've been pounding this stuff for 18 years. I've been pounding fresh juices and fruits and vegetables and eating a plant-based diet, almost mostly organic, not hundred percent, but it certainly was hundred percent when I was healing cancer. So that, so it was a major catalyst for you, obviously to get healthy. Who did you first discover? Like, how did you discover juicing? What was the, what was the first piece of information? Was it a person? Was it a book? So I discovered juicing actually when I was in grade school, because my parents actually owned a juicer way back in the day although we didn't really use it much, although they did expose me to juicing carrots and other things. And my parents shopped at the co-op back in the day. Oh, they probably but, had one of the old Norman Walker books then, huh? Uh, no, not exactly. They had like an old Oster juicer and they weren't really super, they were into kind of eating healthy a little bit, but yeah. nothing like I am now. And Dabbling in it like my mom was too. Yeah. And, but I really got re-educated re about juicing thanks to Jay Cordich, known as the oh, juice. Oh yeah, man. the juice man. So I saw his infomercial back in the 90s, um, you know, on TV and ordered his juicer. And the one thing that he said in his infomercial that I really needed to hear was that juicing could build your immune system. And that was exactly the opportunity that I had to work with and the challenge that I wanted to overcome. And I'm like, I need that juicer. And I, I really didn't understand that. I didn't understand the depth of what I understand now, you know, as I've been selling juicers since 1998 online. And I've been consuming juices all those years, including today's juice, which is purple. It's basically red got cabbage. Some beets in there. Yeah, red cabbage, beets, jicama, maybe a black carrots or the purple carrots in there. Um, lots of really phytonutrient-rich foods with anthocyanins, super yeah. important. But yeah, so it's like he got me into this, and then I one step led to another. I learned about um, colon cleansing through. Uh, the Horizon Shine Cleanse, Dr. Richard Anderson, and then got into basically raw foods with Dr. Gabriel Cousins and Wigmore, all that kind of old school stuff. Yeah. I learned about natural hygiene. And, you know, I basically, over the years, I formed my own little style of mostly all raw foods. I, I include a few heat processed foods, um, you know, for health benefits. And I have videos on online about this as well. Yeah, that's awesome. So, I want to talk about growing food because I know you've done a lot of videos. You've experimented with a lot of different growing techniques, hydroponic, aeroponic, tower gardens, right? Obviously soil. Uh, and after so many years of doing this, you know, there, obviously there are challenges. I have a tower garden, so I've had it for years. <laughs> Love it. I mean, it just, pfft. You know, it just produces so much. And I, I use it for primarily just for leafy greens, right? But it just produces a so much. And uh, and I love that about it. And I love how easy it is. And I don't have a lot of, where I have lived for almost 10 years, I have a lot of tree cover. I don't have a lot of, I don't have really a great area for sunshine to really have a good garden. And we're, we're gonna try to move soon and have a little more garden 
availability. But point is, I know folks that try to garden, they struggle with pests. Even the tower garden for me, for example, every day when I'm growing with the tower garden and it's outside, I have to go and pick caterpillars and like little, you know, little creepy crawlies off of the leafy greens because they will eat that thing bare. And I've, I've tried a few different, you know, natural sort of pest repellents. None of them really seem to be effective. So I'm curious, I know this is a big rabbit hole of like uh, topics here, but I'm curious, you know, what you've found in experimenting with different growing types and what you're, where you are now, like how you like to grow food now. Yeah, sure. So I've lots of I've, I've comments on all those things. Let's see. So I like to grow food in the soil, in the ground. I think that's, I mean, that's what nature God has given us to grow food. Can things be grown hydroponically? Absolutely. Can you grow it aeroponically and indoors with lights and all these things? But I think God made soil and microbes in the soil and the nature's sun. I mean, that's the best way because these have these properties that we just can't duplicate, the different light waves that affect plants differently on different levels and all the different nutrients in the soil that we can't emulate in a hydroponic system. So I'd like to give you this analogy, Chris, that you'll understand and maybe a lot of your viewers will. So it's kind of like us, you know, to get, to get rid of your cancer, you have to change your environment by juicing and by getting all these things and stop eating all that processed food and all the junk food, right? A sick person eating junk food and processed foods attracts cancers and disease and illness. I don't know if I could say that because I'm not a doctor, but that's my opinion and my belief. <laughs> Maybe yours we too. We share that opinion, <laughs> <laughs> that non-medical other... opinion. <laughs> yeah. Now, the other thing I'm going to say is just like we're just like plants. Plants, if they're unhealthy un in, in sick, not getting the right nutrition, they're going to attract disease and pests also. And that's what a lot of people don't understand. Like, I try to use the, you know, the tower garden. I get all these pests, you know, and I'm not going to say I never have pests. I, I could say I have few pests. But what I'll say is this, Chris, is that, you know, if you grow high quality plants, healthy plants that have more complex proteins, then the bugs can't digest the complex proteins. And they're like, this tastes gross. We're going to go somewhere else. Like cancer is going to go affect somebody or you know any any kind of respiratory disease the cold is going to affect somebody that's weaker that that is going to be a good host so my goal as a gardener is to grow the highest quality food not only so that i don't have pest outbreaks on it but also so that when i eat it there's higher levels of protein for the same given calorie for example there's also higher levels of different you know phytonutrients and all the compounds that the plant makes you know, that's, they're more rich because those, in my opinion, are the healing properties for us. So, I mean, that's, that's the overall scope and summary. And I don't, I've never really seen how a hydroponic system like the tower garden could really ramp up and, and achieve those higher quality proteins and nutrients. I mean, you can look up high bricks gardening, which will kind of send you down a whole nother rabbit hole. And that's what they talk about. You could measure the quality of your produce with a simple bricks meter. And they're also the Bionutrient Association is coming out with a, a mass spectrometer that you could have a portable one and just measure the quality of the food by the, basically the colors and how deep and rich the colors are. Which will make Wow, that the is a rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah that that's a huge rabbit hole, man. So I mean, that, that's really fascinating, too, because, again, I, I, I just have to say, I do love the Tower Garden. I'm a fan, right? I'm a fan just because it's fun, right? It's fun and it's easy and the, and the produce is delicious, but yeah, obviously it, I, I totally understand this, um, the, the case that you're making. And I think it's probably hundred percent correct that there, there may be some phytonutrients, plant defenses missing in food that is grown in an environment that is not that doesn't have a little bit of difficulty, doesn't have a little bit of challenges to it, right? And and again, I yeah, I have noticed that uh, if I don't manage actively, you know, physically, <laughs> mechanically remove little little uh, little worms and things, then then yeah, over a course of a week or two, I will lose a, a bunch of green leafies, kale and um, Swiss chard and you know lettuce and different things off the tower garden. Yeah, I mean, the other thing I want to say is, you know, I always teach Chris good, better, best. 
and you, just like with your health and with your diet, you know, hey, I can't make a fresh juice, John. But man, buy one that's pasteurized. You know, I mean, it's not the best, but that's still better than a Coca-Cola or a soda, right? And if totally. you can't grow things in the soil, use a tower garden. So like, I never want to tell people, because it's always better to grow your own than to buy pre-made food. It's always better to do the best you can. So, you know, if the tower garden gets you excited, you love it. And more importantly, it's easy because sometimes growing the soil <laughs> might not be easy either. You might have nematodes in the soil and there's a lots of different things. But, you know, another thing that I really like is that in the soil-based system that I use, nature is self-correcting, right? And that's what I really love about nature. If you kind of like, don't do anything too hardcore, things will correct on its own. Because I mean, that's, that's what nature's there to do. Yeah, and I obviously there's a lot of uh, trial and error with your environment and the types of the things that that grow well where you are. Exactly. And things like that too. And um, I'm looking forward when I have more free time to become a better uh, gardener and grower of food. <laughs> because it's one thing I haven't spent enough time uh, doing and I've, I've been blessed to have access to, uh, you know, Whole Foods and organic uh, grocery stores and things like that. So uh, better than nothing. And, uh, I, you know, and even, even going back to that too, you know, the champion juicer is kind of the original old school juicer. I mean, this was in, in January, 2004, when I started trying to get well, and I was reading George, you know, George Malcolmus and, uh, Dr. Richard Schultz and Dr. Lorraine day. And, you know, some of these figures, they were all saying, just get a champion juicer. So I'm like, all right, champion juicer, right? And yeah, uh, and, yeah, and it, it served me well. They're out of business, by the way. I, I'm sure you probably yeah. heard that. They just went out of business last year, which makes me kind of sad. I know. It, well, they Norwalk's weren't... out of business. I champion heard that. Champion is still technically in business, but they're no longer selling brand new juices. They're only doing service and parts. I heard that Norwalk did. And that makes me sad because those were two legendary juicer brands that, uh, you know, a lot of people... I think have have fond memories and I certainly do have I never I could never scrape together or justify the twenty six hundred dollars for a Norwalk. Um, but um, but the champion served me very well for a, for a long time. And uh, <laughs> anyway, but uh, so I just got to give them a shout out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, champions are built like tanks and they still make an amazing banana ice cream. There you go. Because it, it fluffs it up because it fluffs it up because it adds oxygen to make it nice and fluffy. But when you're juicing, that's a bad thing because now you're oxygenating the juice to degrade all the new some of the new that oxygen sensitive nutrients in there. Some of it, yeah. I don't want to freak some anybody out and think yeah. that the because a lot of my audience have champion juicers and yeah. they, they use them. And it's like, I got well with the champion juicer, you, you'll be okay. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> but yeah, you know, the most important thing and your message is we have the we're saying a lot of the same things, which is great. You know, it's like it's easy to get hung up on perfection. Absolutely. And people, you know, myself included, you tend to think, well, if I don't have the perfect juicer, you know, I, I, it's not going to work for me. Right. And then they just kind of shut down and they do nothing because they just say, if I can't afford a $2,600 Norwalk, then what's the point of juicing? Because it's it's not even going to help me. And that's false. Right. You can you can get benefits with with a cheap, you know, uh, Jack LaLanne juicer or the Juice Man juicer or whatever. Right. You still get benefits. And so. Uh, that good, better, best philosophy is so important, um, especially when you're healing. It's like, you got to take action, right? It's just important that you take some action, get started, start changing your life, start eating more fruits and vegetables, start juicing, like get going. Along the way, you refine, you get better. Maybe you save up, then you buy a better juicer. You know, I mean, things get better as you go, but don't let this sort of ideal perfect scenario that's unattainable be a, a barrier for you to get started completely agree i mean analysis paralysis is what happens i mean i have 700 videos just where i'm comparing juicers and the equipment on youtube people will watch a couple they'll get totally confused and like i don't know what one to buy so then they don't buy it and then i hear from like three months later i haven't known what to buy for three months i'm like I'll call you up and talk to you on the phone to help you work through this. Cause I mean, it might confuse you online, but if I talk to somebody and I hear their needs, know what they want to juice, I could tell them, Hey, this is going to be the best for your specific situation. What you want. I mean, another easy thing I made these days is that I have a video, the best three juicers for 2022, 
where I show the three best juicers and I compare them side by side. If you watch that video, that's probably the only video that people need to watch on juicers in this day and age. Um, and they'll know like one of those machines should do you good because they each have their pros and cons, but I lay it out right on the table pretty clearly. Now it is a 45 minute video or something like that. Most of my videos tend to be long because I'm not trying to like hide the truth just by this one and I'm gonna give you lip service like a lot of people out there that sell juicers or promote juicers, they may only promote one brand or something. And I promote all the major brands and I test all the ones. And I do this for me, number one, primarily because I want the best thing. I want to give myself every possible advantage. And if you're, even if you don't give yourself every possible advantage, like I do, like you said, Chris, just get started. Even, even a cheap juicer from your big box store, you know, that's a high speed that I don't recommend is going to give you more benefits than, in most cases, eating whole fresh fruits and vegetables without juicing because these are, you're blown open the cell walls, you're going to have better digestion, and most people's digestive systems aren't working that well, you know, especially with, when they're having to deal with a lot of plant, especially vegetable and leafy green fiber. Yeah, and that's the point of juice. I think I get this question a lot um, is like, what about the fiber? I mean, why do, isn't the fiber important? And I think just to to answer this, juice doesn't replace a meal. This is not a meal unless you're doing a juice fast, right? Juice is supplemental. That's what it is. It's supplemental. So it's not like don't eat a carrot, only drink carrot juice, right? What what you're doing when you juice is you're concentrating nutrients. You're you're basically bypassing most of digestion because it's going right into your bloodstream. And so you're you're supplying your body with a high level of vitamins, minerals, enzymes, antioxidants, and all these wonderful phytochemicals in plant food with minimal digestive energy required. And that's why juicing became so popular with holistic health practitioners and doctors because they realized very sick people were coming to them. Like Dr. Max Gerson, for example, is you know exclusively for for the most part was seeing stage four cancer patients. I mean, they're very, very sick people. And he realized that juicing was a way to hyper nourish, right? To give these people maximum nutrition with minimal energy required. Because when you have cancer and a lot of, you know, serious diseases, your body has a, a really significant energy problem. And so juice gives you energy and it gives you nutrition. So anything you wanna to add to that? I mean, I would pretty much agree with you. What, what I would say is that, you know, when I'm juicing, like in, in the juice, you can, you keep a percentage of the fiber because there's, I mean, there's many different kinds of fibers that, that science have identified. And the two main categories are usually soluble and insoluble, although there's, you know, thousands of types of different kinds of hemicellulose and lignins and all these other big words that I probably don't even know. Um, but the soluble fiber is kept when you juice. I don't even know if you could see that in my glass, but there's all these little specks. And all those little specks are probably the insoluble fiber because the soluble fiber dissolves in water. And so depending on what you juice will dictate how much fiber I was looking, because I, I have a video on this already where I go over in certain vegetables, there's X percent of soluble fiber. So for example, in carrots, it's about 50% soluble, 50% insoluble. Actually, it's probably like 48, 52 but in, in general, if you're juicing carrots, you're still keeping about half the fiber. And so if you're drinking a carrot juice, right, you're still probably getting more fiber than eating a lot of other processed foods that don't have any fiber. And so, and then also some juicers, depending on the juicer, will keep more of the insoluble fiber that does not dissolve as well. So that's a very important point. But I mean, if you juice pineapple, on the other hand, you get rid of 90% of the fiber because only 10% of the fiber in pineapple is soluble. So that's not necessarily, you know, I generally recommend people stick to juicing vegetables. Um, I would, I prefer that people would eat their fruits whole. And that's what I generally prefer. Although sometimes I will also juice some fruits. If the fruit is low quality, it's not like if I got a watermelon, that's just not fun to eat. I'll juice it. So at least I could get the benefits of drinking it and the water content, which is alive, living, structured water with other lycopene and nutrients in there. But in general, you know, vegetable juicing is, is the best way to go. And it basically concentrates nutrients. And the other thing is like, people forget like, it's better to blend, John, cause you could blend stuff up and you can make a smoothie. So there's, I mean, a couple things, couple things about that is that when you blend, you're blending in a high speed blender. And if you look in the middle of the blender as you're blending, it's a, like a little funnel cone. I think a tornado recently hit somewhere in the US and tore up houses and, and killed some people. 
but like that's what you're doing to your nutrients it's like a tornado inside your blender and you're blowing open cell walls but at the same time you're you're pushing oxygen in there so when you start with a blender you you start with this much and you, you your container is this high when you're done because you've added a lot of oxygen so that's why i recommend slow juicing that will minimize the oxygen actually this juicer runs at like 40 like 5 or 40 rpms barely adds any oxygen to your juice. So it's going to minimally oxidize your juice. That's a Santa 727. That being said, this one's, this is next level blending technology. This is actually the, uh, the craft for the Dynapro vacuum blender. And I have a vacuum pump here that you go put on top of the machine, you press the button and it runs and it sucks the air out of the container before you blend. So now you can blend in an oxygen deprived environment. Once again, keeping more of those viable nutrients as shown in published science for example like there's certain polyphenols in blueberries that can be 3.2 times higher if you're blending in this rather than a traditional blender where you're oxidizing everything so that's why i definitely would over traditional blending and juicing juicing will always win in terms of antioxidants but it depends what are you selecting for if you're selecting for fiber because you believe fiber is more important than phytonutrients then by all means blend your stuff up me, on the other hand, I'm going to choose phytonutrients because a lot of the studies, and from what I've seen, they're, they're a lot more powerful in our bodies for healing. Now, the one exception would be, but John, it, fiber is important for our microbiome. Well, the cool thing is, the fiber that feeds our microbiome is the soluble fiber. Maybe some, some of the insoluble fiber may play a role in our microbiome, so I'm not going to say, like, but you, like you said, Chris, like I like to juice some vegetables, but I will also eat those vegetables in a salad at night. So I'm not just like, I only ever juice carrots and I never eat them. No, I love to eat carrots, dip them in a like a nice raw dressing or a guacamole or a salsa pico de gallo, eat those too. So I think it, it's always best to process your foods in different ways and, and get them into you so you get the better, the most balance and all, all the different nutrients that your body could assimilate differently. Yeah. And, and if you're eating a plant-based diet, you're getting plenty of fiber from your meals, right? The juices are I'm just- I'm getting plenty of fiber. I mean, yeah. I go to the bathroom so many times a day. It's not even yeah. funny. <laughs> yeah. You'll get plenty of fiber, you know, eat, eat plant-based. You'll be good. You're not, you're not missing fiber by juicing. Um, and the way I like to explain it too, is that, is that a smoothie is, that's a meal, right? That is a meal. Juice is not a meal. And so you can't compare the two, right? A, you, you can't compare a juice to a meal, right? They're totally different. So um, I just think that discussion just sort of needs to end. Like, which is better, juicing or smoothie? They're not, they're not even the same, right? They're totally different. So uh, both nutritious in different ways. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, so that's, that's really cool. I, I love your perspective on that. And I think a lot of people probably just learned something about juices actually retaining fiber. You don't realize it's in there, but they actually are retaining fiber and that's good. And I'm, you know, I don't mind a little pulp in my juice anyway, which is obvious fiber. Um, I don't have to strain my juice to be, you know, to be like completely pulp free. I just don't mind it. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. And there's, I've seen some studies that may suggest that sometimes if there's more of the inside of a fiber in there, your juice might stay preserved longer because the fiber has something to do with keeping the nutrients more intact. That being said, I always encourage people to drink their juice right after they make it for best results. Yep. So since you brought that up, I remember seeing a study years ago, and I've talked about this, where they they um, they looked at the enzyme activity in juices <laughs> after one day, two day, three days, something like that, and and they found the en the enzyme activity is still pretty high after a few days of juice being stored. Uh, what is your opinion on, uh, you know, and the reason the reason this is important, I think, to my audience is because for cancer patients, you know, you, a lot of them are doing what I did, which is they're consuming a lot of juice, you know, 40 to 64 ounces of juice every day. And so what I did was I made a huge batch in the morning. First thing I made all my juice for the day and then I drank it throughout the day, which for a lot of people, you know, that's the best they can do. They can't run a fresh juice eight times a day, right? They can't run their juice eight times. A day. They just don't have that much free time. They got kids, they got work, they got whatever. So generally, that's what I that's what I did. That's what I suggest for people to do uh, to be practical and get the juice in and this good, better, best approach, right? And so what have you learned? You're way deeper in in the juicing science than I am. 
what have you learned in terms of uh, how long will a juice stay reasonably fresh if it's you know sealed up in a mason jar? So that's a good question. So yeah, I mean you've got a couple of different points there. So number one is the enzyme point, and I've seen that study too. There's a more subsequent study that came out probably maybe last year, the year before, regarding enzymes and which juicer produces the most enzymes. And people would people could argue and say more enzymes in your juice is better. And on some levels, I could say that could be true. But on other levels, you know, enzymes in your juice also could be bad because enzymes are, are basically are breaking down other nutrients in the juice. And then you may you won't have those other nutrients, although you might have a lot of enzymatic activity. So it kind of once again, what what are you going after? Yeah, and I think you're right. The nutrient content, you know, the overall nutrient content, which I don't know how well it's been studied, is is really what we're going for here. Right. That's what I'm saying. So like, for example, like some some raw foods, let me see if I get this right, because I just saw the study on it recently. Some cooked foods are more nutritious than raw foods, because when you cook foods, you deactivate enzymes that are actually breaking down nutrients in the food in raw foods. Plus, when you're cooking things, you also break open cell walls. So that was quite interesting to see a study that talked about this. There's yeah, more... like cooked tomatoes, for example, have a higher absorbable amount of lycopene. Yeah, one, and one example. things get yeah. converted when they're when they're heat processed. But nonetheless, I'm digressing. So a, as to so the enzyme, that's a whole different discussion. That's an interesting discussion. So enzymes may be good or bad. For me, in juices, I want to try to minimize and slow the enzyme reactions, and also slow the oxygen infiltration in the juice. So, for example, using a high speed juicer puts more oxygen in the juice because you have more dissolved oxygen, and this is totally next level, nobody talks about this, because you have more dissolved oxygen in the juice, the juice basically oxidizes and you lose some of those valuable phytonutrients, especially the oxygen sensitive ones faster. That's why you know traditional blending, not in a vacuum, is not as good, and this is shown in science because, uh, they actually they did a recent study, came out earlier this year, where they did vacuum blended versus non-vacuum blended and saw like the nutrition loss over time after the blend cycle was done, which was insane. Like the vacuum blended stayed constant and the non-vacuum blended over time, nutrition went down. So we wanna, number one, use the juicer that's gonna introduce the least oxygen into the juice. And depending on the juicer type, you know, so the more oxygen in the juice, the less it's gonna store for as long. So that's a whole debate right there. You know, high speed juices will put more oxygen in juice. This juicer at 40 RPM is going to put the least oxygen in your juice. The vacuum blender, using the vacuum blender like I show here, and then using a nut milk bag like I show here, Alexa's nut milk bag. That's alexasbags.com. And I have videos where I show how to vacuum juice will probably put a, the least amount of dissolved oxygen in your juice um, potentially. So you're going to have the least breakdown. So that's the first step is. Juice can't just be stored seven days or 10 days. It depends what juicer did you use, how much dissolved oxygen are, are you adding to the juice? You know, I know you recently promoted the Nama juicer, which I'm a big fan of. Actually, I use this juice a lot. Yeah. But this juicer, you know, puts a fair bit of oxygen in the juice because it has two rotating blades, one here, one here. It's oxygenating the juice. So you really want to pull the oxygen out of the juice if you want to store it. So, I mean, online influencers will say you could store the juice in the NAMA for up to four days just in a sealed mason jar and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, while, while I wouldn't, the juice, while the, yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't either. While the juice could still be good, you know, and uh, how do you how do you define good is, is good like 50 percent of what it should have is good. Just not having bad bacteria that's going to make you sick is good not tasting off so it just tastes horrible and you don't want to drink it because it's like that's it's that's the reactions of it going bad and oxidizing more i don't know so what well, this is what i do chris like this juice when did i make this juice i made this juice five days ago but i yet i still drank it today but i didn't just store this in a mason jar with a lid on it i store this in a mason jar with a special lid on it that i then sucked out the oxygen and even then I sucked out more oxygen than just the, the the empty space in the jar. I pulled oxygen out, the dissolved oxygen out of the juice to come up out of the jar. So now I'm pulling the oxygen out of the headspace, which is what a simple 
weak vacuum pump would do, but I use such a strong vacuum pump, 24, 25 inches of mercury to literally pull bubbles out. And this is not a carbonated juice. I pull bubbles out of all my juices before I store them. And if I store them in this way, I don't have a problem storing my juices for a week. Now, I'm not going to tell people should do that because I'm in a different state of health. You know, I'm in my, I'm not in an active recovery state of restoring my health. I'm in like a, just a, a maintaining and maybe trying to improve just a little bit in my health. I'm not like trying to heal any major issues at this point. But I would say minimally, if somebody is trying to heal, if you are going to store a juice, once again, good, better, best. Do the best practices. Use the juicer that's going to put the least oxygen in your juice. Number two, use a, use a, use a, you know, a vacuum pump and pull the oxygen out of the headspace minimally. And if you could get a more powerful vacuum pump, pull the oxygen out of your juice and then store it for your day. And then I would, you know, and that's better than, I mean, that's, I mean, I, and it's interesting. I, I want to see a study where they pull oxygen out of the juice and then drink it versus like not pulling the oxygen juice and drink it right away. <laughs> that's great. I love that. And I've never done this. I've, and nobody, I want to know. Nobody talks about this. Yeah, I want to know the names of crazy dude. <laughs> yeah, I want to know the names of the devices that you use to pull the the oxygen out. The main one I use is not available because it was on the market for a limited time and maybe like a hundred pieces sold. The main one I use is the um, it's the Blendtec vacuum pump, but that's a whole long you can't story. Get it. You you can't really buy it at this time, so you have to just use a really strong vacuum pump, like the Tribest vacuum pump that will pull out oxygen out of the headspace maybe a little bit out of the out of the juice itself but not like a ton and you can so use that with a mason jar yeah yeah so i i mean i could show you the setup i mean they have a special lid well that you could use i just put it in my kitchen but they have a <laughs> there's many ways to accomplish this i have many videos on how to store your juice under vacuum so you could use this with a food saver mason jar attachments and just the standard mason jar flat lids so that'll pull a very pretty simple vacuum. I haven't tested, I got a rig so I could test how much PSI I'm pulling or how many inches of mercury. So that's on my list to do, but I haven't gotten there yet. Um, so that's probably gonna pull out 20, I believe. Um, they have various hand pumps and different kits you could buy like on Amazon, you know, to store things in a mason jar with like a one-way vacuum lid, which is what I use. I use one-way vacuum lids and I'm always testing all the different ones online even just a simple fermentation lid that you would normally ferment foods in a mason jar come with little simple hand pumps those pumps will pump up to usually about 10 inches of mercury and so that's just a very simple way to do it just with fermentation lids there's like two kits on amazon one of which i bought already that with like a little hand pump and those lids are pretty solid this is what it looks like and on the back it just says vacuum lids it's the vacuum lock fresh manager vacuum lids for containers. Then I think it's the 8.5. Um, was it 8.5 mil centimeter or 85 millimeter? So basically, you get these like lids, and these lids have a little gasket, and then they have a, like a little one way vacuum valve. So you just put the lid on top of your jar. And I, I really love this pump. I haven't tested like the efficacy of the pump or how much it pulls yet, but it's a pretty solid pump. You put it on the top and you just suck, you just pump it. This is probably not gonna pump the oxygen out of the, the juice because it's just not that strong of a pump, but you could totally just pump out the oxygen out of the head space. And then, you know, this is totally sealed on there. And then you gotta press the button it lets the air back in so you could basically take it out. Nice, so, I love it. Yeah, this kit was like, I don't know, 15 bucks or something. It comes with like, I don't know, a bunch of different, four different lids or something, three lids and, and a pump for like 15 bucks. And I mean, that's the good, better, best. Once again, this is better than filling it up to the brim and putting a top on it, which is what most people always said, because that's what Jay Cordish taught me. But you know, now we have vacuum technology significantly, uh, you know, uh, better. So that it, when you when you vacuum pump and you, you pull a vacuum, don't fill it to the top. <laughs> you're gonna you suck some, yeah, top, you're gonna, gonna suck some of the juice out of it, aren't you? And your vacuum pump's gonna get all funky. Yeah. No. But this one comes apart easily so you can clean it. So I do like that. <laughs> That's great, $15 solution. I love that so much. The, I'm always conscientious about 
not making people feel overwhelmed, right? And like, oh no, I'm not doing it right. It's not going to work for me if I don't do it perfectly, like we talked about earlier. So, like, that's a great solution um, for storing juice. And my advice, which hasn't changed, is like just juice for the day, right? I don't like to keep juice more than a day. I just juice it, drink it that day. If you drink it that day, you really it's the the net loss is negligible, right? It's not you're not just all of a sudden you just have this worthless juice, right? <laughs> like it still has nutritional value. Get it in your body. <laughs> I've got a, I've got actually, having said that, I do have some juice in the fridge that's about two days old that I need to finish. I did a, a big batch a couple and of days ago. And you didn't vacuum seal it. No, I didn't vacuum seal it. So yeah, I, I, I'm sure it has degraded, but I'm still going to drink it. <laughs> I know there's uh, there's still some good stuff in there for me. I'd agree with you on that, Chris. And, you know, just if a juice is a one or two days bad, not sealed properly or, you know, vacuum sealed, once again, good, better, best. The juice you made still two days old is still way better than a pasteurized juice from the store. That being said, you know, I, to save time these days, because, I mean, I wish I had the time to juice every single day and make juices for that day. Maybe one day when I have a big staff and all these and a partner that could do that for me, I would do that. But I make juices in bulk and I'll store my juices for up to seven days you know, with a very var powerful vacuum. And I, I taste very little nutrient degradation because of it. And I, I, would, I would think I'm fairly sensitive to these things and I, it doesn't usually taste off. Now, the interesting thing, Chris, is that sometimes when I store them under it the, like this, because these lids are kind of also similar lids that they use to basically use do fermentation in mason jars. Some of my juices will spontaneously ferment, especially ones that I have high in like pineapple, for example then they'll automatically get carbonated in there. And there's actually, there's some published science on spontaneously fermented kale juices, for example, and how the nutrients can change and shift. So now I'm having a probiotic rich drink that I just really didn't do anything for, except for forgot about this in the back of my fridge. And it fermented because it's maybe 10 or 14 days old and I still drink it. <laughs> so Yeah, the, the, for the fizzy, yeah, the old fizzy juice definitely makes me nervous. But right, it is it is just fermentation. So it hopefully shouldn't be a shouldn't be a problem. And, and might once be again, beneficial. the other thing, other thing very important, Chris, to store your juices, you know, I, I talked about a few things. Number one, proper juicer, introduce at least oxygen. Number two, store in a vacuum, strong vacuum. Number three, keep your fridge cold, guys. Once again, enzymatic activity, when it's cold, it slows down significantly. So the fridge that I store all my juices is, a, is my special fridge. If I look at the thermometer, I have a thing on the outside that shows me the temperature at the back where the, where the cold air comes out. It's 28 degrees back there. But then as it comes up hot, warmer in the fridge, my fridge tends to be about 33 to 35 degrees is where I try to keep it at. So the coldest, but not yet freezing. Once again, another very important tip to store your juices if you want to store them longer, even if you just want to store it shorter, keep it as cold as possible. I know a lot of people that I got to save money. So I got my fridge set at 40 degrees. To me, that's way too warm. That's a great tip. Those are really, really good tips. I'm excited uh, that you shared those. So um, your top three juicers of 2022, did the Nama make the cut? Yes. So the, it is one of my top three juicers. And actually, to be honest with you, the Nama is the juicer that I use the most in my kitchen for my specific needs, not to say the Nama in my testing did not make the most nutrition. It do, did not make the most yield, but it is the most easiest. And especially because I bulk juice, like when I made this juice, Chris, I made like six, actually I made seven quarts of this same juice because I juice like a ton of produce. I'll make it in one big batch. It'll take maybe like an hour or so. Then I, I, I vacuum seal them all. I have them in my fridge and now I can just grab and go. So in this way, I'm more compliant to my diet style which my diet style includes basically and i'm not juice fasting or doing anything i drink basically two 32 ounce juices a day just as my normal course of my life in addition to eat fresh fruits and eating lots of vegetables and some heat processed vegetables as well well it's cool i'm glad to hear that the one of the world's uh foremost experts on all things juicers uh loves to use the nama juicer and is using it a lot because i love it too and uh, yeah you know there's no perfect juicer there, there are juicers that have that are really good at some things and not good at others. And you know, you know, like I said, I used the Champion for years. Great with carrots, terrible with leafy greens. Right now, we know it was it's high speed. It, it probably oxidized my juice more than slow juicers and all that. But 
But yeah, I, I we've enjoyed the Nama a lot too because because of the big container on the top, you can just dump everything in there and turn it on and walk away. And it the yield's pretty good. It's not going to compare with a you know a Norwalk or a or a press, you know, Champion plus a hydraulic press. Yeah, you're going to get a lot more juice that way. But uh, but still, it's uh, we've been really happy with it. And it's a fun juicer, and my, my a lot of folks in my community um, that have gotten the Nama really enjoy it too. So it's I'm I'm glad to hear that you that you like it. Well, yeah, I mean, it's a juicer I use the most. I mean, it comes down to me for this. It's easy. Yeah. Even if I'm losing some nutrition, because I'm not even perfect. I mean, I have the best extraction technology on the planet, trust <laughs> me. But I still use the Nama most. I, I'm not going to say I use it exclusively, because there'll be times when I'll grab the Santa 727 because, you know, I grow things in my garden that I have limited quantities of, and I want to make sure I oxidize it the least and get the most extraction. Then I'll use this, or even even more so, you know, like I talked about, I use the Dynapro with the bags, you know, and that could be more efficient for ju when I do fruit-heavy recipes that the Nama, you know, may mush fruits more than actually juice them. Plus, you know, you can't, I mean, basically using a vacuum blender plus the bag, Chris, is pretty much, in my opinion, better than using a Norwalk because you're going to get a similar um, similar quantity of juice, but you're going to make a higher quality juice. But that being said, you can't juice everything in a vacuum blender. I have videos on this. Like you couldn't do Norman Walker's carrot juice in the vacuum blender because the vacuum, the carrots don't have enough liquid content to blend properly in there. And, and the blender with the vacuum does a better job at grinding than a Norwalk or even the newer pure juicers do. And, and once again, it's done in an oxygen deep prime environment. So you're not getting the oxidation. And that's something that I also help to introduce to the world the vacuum juicing technology. I also introduced vacuum blenders because I saw that at the trade show back in the day in like, I don't know, 2017 or 18. And I started making videos about that. And that's also, you know, nobody really knows about vacuum blending and they don't really understand why it's different. And nowadays, most major companies stop selling vacuum blenders because they didn't sell well. Americans don't understand the benefits. I think that people into their health should really should really buy a vacuum blender and stop traditionally blending because there's new new technologies out there, but nobody really promotes it or even talks about it that much, which is unfortunate. So do, does TriBest still make that Dynapro? That's the TriBest Dynapro? Absolutely. Dyna so yeah. this, is the, this is their latest model, the Dynapro 2250. They had a 1050 model that I do not recommend. It had some really inherent issues with it. That's why they came out with a new version. But yes, they do make that. Kuvings also makes one. The Kuvings is coming out with a new one, hopefully later this year. That should be a really blast off unit. And but yeah, it's, it, they're very far and few in between vacuum blenders. Actually, I just made a video on my OK Raw channel a couple of weeks ago about a forty dollar vacuum blender and why I would rather use a forty dollar vacuum blender instead of a four hundred dollar Vitamix. And it all it has to do with specifically the nutrition, the color retention, the flavor, all these things that are important to me may not be important to other people. And if you're making margaritas all the time, save your money, don't buy a $40 vacuum blender. But that vacuum blender went out of stock because my videos sold them all, but now they're back available again on eBay for 40 bucks. So if you got, if your viewers are watching this, they should go out and buy them before they disappear again. And what is that brand? It, it's a... Uh, <laughs> It's just some it's some off brand name. I don't remember the brand name, but you could look. Well, they're not. Own. They can't find it if they don't know the brand name. <laughs> they could watch my video on my OK Raw channel. Okay, we'll try to find it and link to that video. Seriously. No, that's really cool. And I remember when those when those um you know I've been doing this a while and all that. I remember when the vacuum blender technology started to to come out and thinking, my that's really interesting. That's cool. But I've I've never bought one. I've never tried one. Never used it. And of course, I've had a Vitamix for forever i mean they just will not die um but yeah now i'm now i'm really interested you've stoked my curiosity for sure on uh on vacuum blending yeah and i also do sell a kit so funny thing happened is that i was selling these other brand vacuum blenders uh from uh australia from a australian company biochef and they sent me one of their demo units and i'm like wait a second this blender top looks like it'll fit on the vitamix but they made it for their own blender and I take it and put it on the Vitamix, it fits. So I'm like, and then I contact them and I'm like, hey guys, can you just sell me the top and the and the and the um, vacuum pump alone so I can sell it to my Vitamix owner so that they could vacuum blend now? And they're like, let us look into that. And then they then they were able to do it. So now I sell that kit. It's just a new craft and a new vacuum pump that will fit on all traditional Vitamixes, not the new ones with the you know the chip inside the craft and stuff, but all classic Vitamix models, which is the majority of them out there, can now vacuum. That's blend what I have. In this carafe, right? So with a two hundred dollar upgrade, 
you can now start vacuum blending. Now the performance I'll say, cause I've done testing and I have videos showing this, it doesn't grind quite as well to the fineness consistency if that's really a stickler for you. But I would rather, once again, I would rather personally choose something that has been vacuum blended, even if the consistency is not super fine, <laughs> than something non-vacuum blended with finer consistency, but to each their own. <laughs> that's really cool. All right, we'll have to link to that too. Uh, in the show notes so people can uh, get that kit because I know a lot of folks in my audience have Vitamix blenders and um, I've, cause I've been a fan for years and I talk about it all the time. Um, all right, the one more thing here. You, uh, uh, there's a question right on the tip of my tongue. It, when you vacuum blend, so you're saying what you like to do is if you, you'll vacuum blend fruit and then you'll put it in a nut milk bag and squeeze out the juice. That's what you're saying, right? Or, no, I... I, I... Well, I use, or do you use a press. No, well, you could use a press, but here's the thing. <laughs> I also mostly do with vegetables also, you know, but I, but it's easier to do it with um, vegetable, with fr fruits that are have high water content or vegetables with a high water content. So I have a video on YouTube, antioxidation green juice, that the base of it is basically celery or, or cucumbers, and then add a bunch of greens in there. And then I basically blend it up in this Dynapro and then use the bag to squeeze it. Very important you get the right bag because all nut milk bags are not created equal. These are the best bags for juicing um, in your vacuum blender, Alexa's nut milk bags. Actually, these this is um, founded from Tom Dixon, the, the uh, blend tech fame, you know, who made the Will It Blend series. And actually I got to give credit to Tom where credit is due because I was using vacuum blenders independently for many years because I believed in them. But then when I drove up to Blend Tech and I got introduced to their vacuum blender and their technology, and then Tom introduced me to like, John, you got to try this vacuum juicing thing. And I'm like, I've never recommended vacuum juicing because if you blend in a blender and then you put it through a nut milk bag, it's highly oxidized. So that's the number one reason why I don't do it. And it's not the same as using a slow juicer. But when I vacuum juiced in his blender and his blender system, and then use the bags and I drank the juice compared to a slow juicer that I brought with me, I was like, oh my gosh, I've been doing this wrong all these years. I've been selling juices for over 20 years now, and this is honestly a better technology. What am I gonna tell my people? And then I'm like, well, I'm gonna tell them the truth and I'm gonna tell them like they should be vacuum juicing if they really, because I was like, when I drank the juice, Chris, you wouldn't understand, like, I'm like, wow, this juice tastes the best out of any juicer pure juicer, Nurwalk, Champion, the best slow juicers, the twin gears, this tastes better than all of them. That's incredible. Yeah. And what's different about the bags? So yeah, I mean, there's lots of things about the bags. Number one, I mean, I could open this pack here. This, these bags are oversized. That's number one. So I could take like, um, I could take like a one cup anchor hawking or no, two cup or no, sorry, two quart anchor hawking um, mixing bowl glass put this over the top. The second thing is there's no strings on this bag. So like it, the string channel could get like things could get stuck in there and pulp could get stuck and it's a pain to clean. It could harbor bacteria. The next thing it has nice, even, not super hardcore rounded edges, but rounded edges. So it's, um, you know, um, easy to get in there and clean. The next thing that's very important about this bag over others is the, is the material and more importantly, the pore size, the porosity. So this, you could, I mean, I could see through this. You can't see a, through a Norwalk press bag, right? Um, so this allows more of the different, more fiber through it than say a Norwalk cloth would that I believe retains too much fiber and re is retaining nutrients, whereas this will let it through. And the other thing that's for me, the most important thing about, all, even though th th those things are really cool, this thing is super easy to clean. That's where this wins my heart. Right. What I do is I take this to my backyard and I have a, I have a laundry sink in the backyard with my hose, like my garden hose that have a high pressure sprayer. I literally put this in the sink on top of like a, a net tray that kind of holds it up. And I literally spray hard pressure water on it to just basically blast. I go this direction, then I go this direction, and then I turn it inside out, do the same thing. If I do that four times on four sides, the thing's clean without any scrubbing. <laughs> Nice. So that, yeah. So, and you're just, well, but you're just squeezing through by hand. You're not using a press with that bag. Ex yeah. So, I mean, I've used a press. So if you use a press on this bag, the fibers get stuck in the cloth in, in the, in the fibers, and then you can't remove it. But here's the thing, Chris, that people don't understand. 
because you're vacuum blending and now you break down the fibers to like the smallest particle size, you can hand press it and you get a high yield. So for example, if I just did straight celery in here, I blend up straight celery, put it through my bag, hand squeezed it, right? The pulp comes out about as dry as a Norwalk press for $2,500 with my hands because unlike a Norwalk that grinds it, that literally puts it through a 3,600 RPM grinder that puts it in, it hits the grinder, it comes out instantly. It doesn't break down the particle size to the smallest particle size. The blender, there's no better appliance to break down particles than a blender under vacuum to resist the oxidation. And now you can easily squeeze this. Now I understand some people may have arthritis and all these things. And then at that point, I guess you could use some kind of mechanical means, but I'm, I have a video where I compare vacuum blending in this versus using like a, a pure Norwalk style juicer. And the yields are basically the same. I think I actually, I think the machine got a little bit more, but it's basically the same New, basically the same yield, but also this costs like two thousand dollars less for the setup. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's a big difference. You can you can buy a lot of produce with two thousand bucks, a lot of a lot of stuff with the money you're saving, which has always been my sort of argument against really expensive equipment. It's like, look, you can buy a lot of food with that money, and you can still um, accomplish what you want to accomplish. And that's what I love about you, John, is like you spend so much time researching and comparing and different doing. juicers, huh? <laughs> And doing and doing, doing them right and doing and comparing and showing like all these different options that that people have and and again at the end of the day you know it's more important that that your daily routine is consistent that every day you're eating lots of fruits and vegetables fresh fruits and vegetables preferably organic lots of raw food that you're drinking fresh juices daily like and again it might come from a cheap juicer it might come from a super expensive juicer but you know make the juice get it in your body. And over time, yeah, you can improve your routine. And you may find, as John ex gave a perfect example with him using the Nama, and even what I found with my own uh, juicing journey, is that um, I, I've owned multiple types of juicers. And for years, I just went back to the Champion because it was easier for me. I felt like the Champion was just really easy to clean. It was fast right? You, the, the produce runs through quickly and it was easy to clean. It's like four parts or something. And so I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I just keep gravitating back to it because of ease of use. And so now obviously the Nama is our favorite and, and it's even easier and quicker than the champion. Um, and at the end of the day, it's like, you know, Sherry Kalbaum. Yep. You know, Sherry's famous for saying the best juicer is the one that you will use. <laughs> so, yep. you know, it's like, that's the most important advice. It's really good advice. And I repeat, I, I quote her often on that. Yeah, that's why I make videos. You know, I could sh I show people all the different options. So I'm not saying do what I do or do what Chris does. Learn the options and learn the pros and cons of each of those options and see which one makes the most sense for you. Hey, if you, if you don't mind blending things up and then straining through a bag, I mean, I'll tell you, I'll be the first one to tell you that's the best way to juice. But it's a lot of work, you know, you got to get all like make sure it blends up properly. You got to have enough liquid content in your stuff Then you got to use your hands. But hey, using your hands is some exercise and it's good to move our bodies. I'm sure exercise is a big part of your program as it is mine. I mean, I'm like moving all day, you know, and then people are so lazy. They want all this machinery to do all this stuff for them. You know, hey, ride, get in your car instead of riding your bike or something, you know, I mean. Yeah, yeah. Well, John, this has been really fun. Your wealth of information and I appreciate what you've done and what you're continuing to do out there in the world. And you've got several YouTube channels. I want to make sure everybody knows where to find you. So will you, uh, will you list those please? Sure. Yeah. So you could check me out if you want to learn about gardening and growing your foods. I've over, I don't know, 1700 videos on gardening at growing your greens YouTube channel or growing your greens.com. I also teach about my specific diet and my lifestyle on my raw foods channel called OK raw or OK raw.com and also compare all the different juicers on all the appliances that allow, you to eat more, that allow you to eat more fruits and vegetables and get their highest extraction and nutrition out of it at my Raw Foods YouTube channel, or just uh, search Discount Juicers on YouTube, or you could go to discountjuicers.com, which is my e-commerce website, which is um, hopefully gonna get updated later this year. <laughs> cool, awesome. All right, well, thanks for watching everybody. Thanks again, John. Uh, we'll put links below to some of the things he talked about to his channels, some of the equipment we talked about, all kinds of stuff. And uh, so you can connect with him and uh, and learn. And I need to dig in and watch uh, 
a lot more of his videos. I, I know I'm not gonna be able to watch them all at this point. <laughs> too many like mine. There's no people can't watch all mine either. It's too many. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching everybody. Please share this video with people you care about and I'll see you on the next one.